Yo, what is good YouTube? We are back with another video. We are going to be going over one of the most important things I use day trading. So we're going to be going over how I use midnight open and why you should be using it every day that you wake up and get on the charts. It should be one of the first things that you mark off. If you're not on the free discord, go join it. It is linked down below, but we're going to go over these past five days of price action on the NASDAQ and how you can, uh, use midnight open to get a guide on where price would like to go so this is monday's candle right here now coming into monday i was bullish on nasdaq i did not trade nasdaq on monday but i did want to see higher prices because i was anticipating a fair value gap to start to form here so I was bullish on NASDAQ to see a fair value gap open up. Now, if we head down to the 15 minute chart and go to Monday's price action, we can, the first thing you want to do is take out a trend line tool or a horizontal ray and mark out that midnight opening price. Now, what you want to see, right? I trade New York session. So you want to be a buyer if we are bullish on the day you want to be a buyer below or very close to midnight open right but sometimes during the new york session you're not going to get that right like new york opens up right here you're not always going to get a close entry to that midnight opening price right it's right down here at 18006 and nasdaq came down to 1842 at 9 30 when new york opens up so what you want to be doing is this if we are anticipating a classic buy day on the nasdaq what you want to see is true day open right we use midnight open as the real daily open so if that's the real daily open we would like to see price come below that midnight opening price open low higher close this right here is creating that wick right from uh like right here it's creating that wick if midnight open is right here it's creating that wick for a open low high close a classic buy day on nasdaq so it's creating that lower wick for us to have a classic buy day now if we do this you can measure out standard deviations, right? We'll go, I'll go over this in another video. I have done videos on this in the past. <clears throat> so what you want to see here is, are we respecting negative two and a half? Well, right here during a uh, London session. Yes, we are. Oh, right here at nine 15, we close above negative two and a half comes straight up to negative four close above that classic by day momentum. So the only opportunity I would see on the NASDAQ is right here. Right here, we take out this low. We close above this candle right here, right? Changing the state of delivery. Right here, we have a plus order block. Close above, tap it, tap again, and then we continue up the rest of the day for a open, midnight open, low, up here is the high, and then the bullish close. It pretty much closed at the highs because that's what we are anticipating for a classic buy day. So right here, you can analyze this chart as a classic buy day whenever we create this lower wick and we are anticipating higher prices because we are anticipating that daily candle to form what an imbalance right so we are anticipating this to form an imbalance so tuesday opens up right here so if we go to tuesday's price action i did not trade uh nasdaq on tuesday either because i was anticipating once again choppy well not once again but i was anticipating choppy uh price action so if we mark out midnight opening price right here boom midnight open what do we notice all day right so right here midnight open what's this look like looks like straight accumulation so we have this accumulation once again you you use this as a power of three model open low high close open high low close you use it as a power of three so right here we come up what do we see here we are holding 
that midnight opening price. So let's see, can we get an entry on the five minute? I'm actually not sure if we do, but maybe we do. So right here, we inverse this fair value gap. We continue, look at the bodies. Look at the bodies on that. We continue to hold that midnight true opening day price, showing that we want higher prices. So if we inverse this five minute fair value gap, you can anticipate this high becoming the draw. So once we take that high, we do nothing. Right here, we accumulate more. And where do we go straight after that? We go straight to that midnight opening price and we would close this as a doji candle because that midnight opening price is the true day open, the true daily open. We close this as a doji candle. We continue to hold that opening price. And what else can you anticipate with midnight open? If, <clears throat> sorry, if we uh, deviate far enough and we don't have a clear bias, you can anticipate that price is gonna wanna uh, gravitate to that opening price and have a doji close on that midnight opening price. Just like what we saw on Tuesday, we have no clear direction. We could open up that second fair value gap. So right here, we accumulate, we manipulate above these highs, and then we get distribution straight to that midnight opening price. Right, so let's go to Wednesday. Now for Wednesday, I was bearish coming into the day, right? I took a trade on the NASDAQ. I took a short. Why was I bearish? This fair value gap right here, right? Internal to external, uh, right here. Internal to external, right here. We are using internal model to external model. So I was bearish coming into the day. I wanted to see this get tapped into and then a distribution to that external draw. So coming to the 15 minute, right here's that external draw, Wednesday's price action. What do we do? Mark out that midnight opening price right there, zero, zero. So right here, deviation above, what do we do? Mark out that negative two, negative two and a half. Where do we go to? Straight to that negative two, two and a half, distribution higher. We form an SMT with all these highs right here with ES and NQ. So we form that SMT, oops, with ES and NQ. Now this is where I took my trade. I took a short, right? Because I'm not anticipating this becoming the draw the same exact day. I'm anticipating that third or fourth candle distributing to this high. Not the very first candle tapping into that internal draw and then dis yes, you can have that, but I'm not anticipating the set, the very first candle distribution into that internal and then distribution straight to that external draw. You just don't anticipate that. So you mark out that midnight open, you get that deviation lower. And if I'm incorrect, I'm pretty, or if I am correct, we had seek and destroy. So London takes out Asia and Asia high and Asia low. We come down in New York session, take out London's low, distribute straight up to London's high, form that SMT. This is where I shorted on the NQ, right? This third candle right here, as soon as it opened, I short, put my stop up here, target uh, this internal draw on the 15 minute. Jeez, can I get that? Right there. Took a two contract short because I'm anticipating the candle not taking out that external draw, right? So right here, we have that midnight open. What do we see? We get that deviation above. I have a bearish bias. Yes, we have tapped into that internal draw right here, right? We have tapped into it, but we are not anticipating that external draw being taken on that same candle. It'll be the third or fourth candle, right? Taking a look at the daily chart, we are not anticipating this Wednesday candle to come into the internal draw and then distribute straight to that external draw. That rarely happens. It's that third or fourth candle we wanna have our eyes on, right? So I took that short, where do we take profit? equilibrium discount right we come into discount then we come straight back up to midnight open reject it and then we chop out right so where do we close we close right here pretty much a doji candle again right so this is how i was analyzing the chart 
why I shorted above midnight open, seek and destroy model, anticipating that external draw to stay intact until that third or fourth candle. We are above midnight open, shorts above, longs below, gave that opportunity, shorted into a discount PD array, right? So now, now that we have tapped into that internal draw, Thursday, I come in bullish, expecting this high to be taken, right? And I think ES actually did take that high on Thursday. Yeah, Thursday, ES actually took that high. NQ did not. So Thursday opens up midnight open right here. Midnight open. What do we do? We are anticipating a classic buy day again. Midnight open right here. We get that deviation lower into a discount PD array. This lower fair value gap, right? Technically a BPR right there. Fair value gap. We come in, hold it, come down again. We form an SMT with the ES. Trust me, I remember. Form that SMT with the ES because I actually took a loss on this day. I went against my draw on liquidity. I completely disregarded my bias. Don't worry, I came out break even on the day. Took two L's, one win, came out negative $20. If you want to see my full weekly profit loss, go into the Discord, check my chat. I put in my full <clears throat> uh, profit and loss. So, Below midnight open, here we are. We are below midnight open at uh, New York Stock Exchange open. So, five minute chart. We come down, get that deviation below. Close above midnight open. We have a high probability order block. Why is this a high probability order block? We swept liquidity, right? We don't need to take this low. This is the low that gave us that internal draw on liquidity. We tap that, neg or that plus order block. We want this high right we want this high because why that's the in or the external draw on the hourly time frame right here's that high <clears throat> you uh take profit at this high we form an smt with the es with this external draw that we do anticipate being taken on this candle or the next candle right but you are taking uh profits up here as well right this is a that's 131 that's a fucking 80 point trade right that's an 80 point trade yeah an 80 point trade bro that is enough for the day right if you want to leave runners leave runners up to this external draw because that's what we are anticipating we get that deviation below midnight open and what do you notice rejection rejection oh we get displacement above midnight open we get displacement below but we form that smt refusal to take out that uh this uh low right here inside of that higher time frame pd array so we have a failure swing inside of a higher time frame pd array displacement higher tap that net uh plus order block distribution to that external draw on the hourly time frame and then the daily external draw up here does not get hit until friday so coming into friday's price action we are still even though we have that smt we are still anticipating that draw becoming that external draw so right here we have that midnight opening price right there so what do we see we have barely any wick below midnight open we have all this price action let's get actually no i do want that there we have all this price action above so we have midnight open down here barely any wick we take out that external draw displacement above we have uh do we have no we have new york session opening up displacement above these highs and then we come straight down we are well above midnight open and remember we have taken that external draw so longs are completely off the table we can anticipate price coming down to midnight open and closing as a doji candle why because we are in a hell of a premium we are well above midnight open we accumulated right here we have a double purge we have lows being taken, straight distribution to these highs. Then we have that second purge again, or sorry, first purge of the lows, second purge of the highs. Then you get distribution again to midnight open because we have already taken that external draw. Longs are off the table. Midnight open barely has a wick. If I turn on this power of three candle, right? If I remove 
this price action right here look at that wick barely a wick so what do we anticipate if we go to the one minute chart there is setups i stay on the five minute i traded gold on this day because we already took that external draw right filtering out low probability days versus high probability days but we get a move straight down to that midnight open and then we chop right around it because we are in such a premium and then we get that distribution straight down to midnight open and close as a doji practically right we get that closure right there basically a doji candle 21 points so this is how you can start to use midnight open as a guide if we are well above it you want to be looking for shorts if we are bearish if we are well below it you want to be looking for longs if we are very bullish and if you have a reason to stay bullish if we are well above you want to just keep another time you can use is 8 30 try to get an entry close to 8 30 but midnight open is one of the highest things you need to be using you want to see what happened around that midnight opening price right we accumulated here barely any actually no manipulation lower after that midnight opening price this would be your manipulation higher right as that basically open higher lower close even though we did form a bullish candle look at this wick that's your manipulation and then we get that closure so midnight open as a guide put it on your charts every day when you wake up and try to get an entry close to it or above it below depending on your bias if you enjoyed the video drop a like we're close to 4k subscribers so drop a sub and i will see you guys in another video peace